Algebra 2, we're going to work on how do you graph an exponential function. You can tell that something is an exponential function because the exponent, uh, the variable is in the exponent position. Like, so your parent function here is y equals b to the x. So I'm going to graph y equals 2 to the x. So in this case, b equals 2. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So we're just going to start by making a table of values. And my general suggestion is whatever it takes to make this exponent a 0 starts in the middle of your table of values. And then we choose values bigger, bigger, smaller, smaller. You could put this into your calculator. If you punch 2 to the negative 2 in your calculator, it's going to tell you that the answer is 0.25. Because negative exponents make for fractions. Uh, here's why. So to fix a negative exponent, you send it down to the denominator. So 2 to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the second power. And 1 over 2 to the second power is 1 fourth. If you put 2 to the negative 1 in your calculator, that will tell you that it's a half or 0.5. Here's what you do need to know. 2 to the 0 power equals 1. Anything to the 0 power is always, always 1. 2 to the first is 2, and 2 to the second is 4. We're going to plot these points. Negative 2, just estimate a quarter as best you can. 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. So here is what this graph looks like. Uh, for type, this graph is increasing in value. We always read a graph from left to right, and as x gets bigger, y gets bigger, and this is what we call a growth function. This is what exponential growth looks like. Uh, the domain. Domain, remember, are your x values. What could I plug in place of x? Anything that I want. So the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or we would say maybe all real numbers. You can plug in anything you want. Your range. Your range is the y. It's the answers that you get out of it. It measures your distance up and down. So y, it looks like it is coming close to 0, but it's never quite going to get there. Uh, so your range is y is greater than 0, which in um, this format we would write as 0 to positive infinity. The asymptote in this problem is this line y equals 0. An asymptote is a line that your graph approaches, but will never cross. So it comes super, super close to, to this line, y equals 0, but it never crosses over it. Um, the intercept, I meant y-intercept. So we have a y-intercept right there at 0, 1. You can always find a, a y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. And there is no x-intercept because it doesn't cross the x-axis. 
All right, let's try a similar problem. But this time, my B value is a half. So as it turns out, when your B value is a fraction between 0 and 1, um, we get a different shape to our graph. So in all these, we're basically going to start with whatever it takes to make your exponent 0 in the middle. Bigger, bigger, smaller, smaller. If you put one half to the negative two in your calculator, it will tell you that it is four. And it is because these laws of negative exponents. If you put one half to the negative one in there, it is two. One half to the zero power is one. Anything, here's what you need to take out of this. Anything to the zero power is always, always one. A half to the first power is a half, and a half to the second power, you got to square both of those, and that gives you one fourth. These are my points that I'm going to plot. Negative two, four, negative one, two, zero, one, one half, two, a quarter. All right, so what type is this? So as you go across, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So this is a decreasing function. Because as x is getting bigger, y is getting smaller. We will call, we will call this a decay function. Uh, what is your domain? That means what can I plug in place of x? Anything that I want. My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Your range, it looks like it's the same thing actually. It goes 0 to infinity. I also, on this one, have an asymptote. at y equals 0. And uh, on all of these parent functions, you will always have a y-intercept right here at 0, 1. x-intercept is none because you have an asymptote and it can't do that. I'm going to pause this video and go make part two uh, for the back side because we need to do some transformations next.